Welcome to my lesson on understanding preserve aspect ratio. Preserve aspect ratio is hugely important to understand when you want to put your SVGs inside flexible containers. Before I get into the technical details, I just want to show you what it does. Here are three versions of the same SVG embedded side by side. As you can see, each monster is very tall and thin. And currently the height of each SVG is set to 100% of the body, which would be the full height of the browser window right now. So right now they all look nearly identical and I wanna point out that the eyes are perfectly circular. What I'm going to do now is change the height of the body. And you're gonna notice three different things. One, the one on the left, we can still see his head and his feet got cut off. This one in the middle seemed to get squashed, as you can see with his eyes are clearly now elliptical. And the one on the right has his head chopped off and we're just seeing his feet. What I did by shrinking the height of the browser window was forcing the SVG view box to have a different aspect ratio than the viewport. And when that happened, we got these three different results. And my whole purpose of today's lesson is to show you exactly why these three different things happened and how you can control them to your needs. I'm gonna go ahead and make this browser window tall again and show you what happens when I make it less wide. Let's take a look here. And again, you're going to see that the middle monster gets sort of squished and you'll see his eyes are no longer perfect circles. But if you look at the monster on the left, you'll see that we're seeing the left side of him and his right side gets cut off. And this monster here has his left side cut off and his right side is visible. So as I adjust the size of this container, you'll see that all three SVGs are responding differently. And here we have a very common usage of preserve aspect ratio. You'll see here that we have trees going edge to edge and the birds are kind of in the center. As I make the browser window more wide, you'll see that we expand left to right to show more trees while keeping the birds in the middle and they're not getting distorted at all. This is very handy when you wanna have sort of an infinite background and keep things nicely centered without any scaling. Since we're preserving aspect ratios, it's important that we understand what an aspect ratio is. It's the ratio between an object's width and height. So the blue rectangle has a width of 800 and a height of 400. Those values can be boiled down to a 2 1 ratio. The pink square has width and height of 400, giving it a 1 to 1 ratio. We could pretty much boil down the purpose of preserve aspect ratio as trying to get a skinny rectangle into a square while maintaining its aspect ratio. I've got one more visualization to show you what happens when we're dealing with objects with mismatched aspect ratios. So imagine you have this beautiful family photo with a landscape aspect ratio and you wanna put it into this portrait frame. You could view the entire photo like this or align it to the top of the frame or move it down, but you'll probably wanna keep it centered. If you wanna fill the frame, you can have your uncle do this in Photoshop. You'll see that the people are stretched and the aspect ratio is not preserved. Chances are you would want something more like this. The photo is scaled up proportionally and centered. Some of the image outside the frame is sliced off. At this size, you can fill the whole frame and align the photo to the left edge and hide Junior or align to the right and hide Dad. Basically, all the options I just showed you are available when your SVG view box has a different aspect ratio than your SVG's viewport. I'm now going to show you how we can decipher all of these preserve aspect ratio attribute values so we can achieve all those settings and more. So if you were to start your preserve aspect ratio journey in the MDN docs, you would find this very technically accurate definition that says the preserve aspect ratio attribute indicates how an element with a view box providing a given aspect ratio must fit into a viewport with a different aspect ratio. Similar to me saying fitting a skinny rectangle into a square. And if you scroll down, you're gonna start seeing some SVG source code that has different view box width and height settings and this sort of cryptic preserve aspect ratio string. And as we scroll down, there's a whole lot of these and clearly just reading this code isn't gonna help us too much, 
but we're eventually going to get down to where are you this fun little bit of oh no here it is demo where you'll see what all that code generates and basically what it's showing you is how the same SVG can be embedded on a page with different preserve aspect ratio settings. When you roll over them, you'll get this little tooltip that says X mid Y mid slice. When you roll over this one here, you'll see that it's X mid Y mid meat. And as you interact with more of them, you'll start to get a feel for what all this means. And if you want to read even further, you're going to get into these things that say, oh, X min Y min, force uniform scaling, align the min X of the elements view box with the smallest X value of the viewport, align the min Y of the elements view box with the smallest Y value of the viewport. And there are all these detailed definitions of these various alignment values. And although all of this is technically accurate and great, it can be incredibly overwhelming if you are just sort of starting here. And so what I want to do is walk you through a number of demos and working examples so that you can totally visualize these concepts and then come back to this article and really dig into the technical details when you want. I was very fortunate to find this preserve aspect ratio demo by Giovanni Di Federici as it saved me a lot of time from building something similar on my own. Now, coming to this with a pair of fresh eyes, it might be a bit confusing as there's all these different buttons to press. You see preserve aspect ratio none up here, and you see the smiley face. You don't really know what it's doing. Well, the trick to this is to use this handle here to change the aspect ratio of the viewport. And what's happening here is that with preserve aspect ratio none activated, it means that the view box will fill the viewport and not preserve its aspect ratio. So this circular face can get squished and squashed and whatever you want to do, all right? So without the aspect ratio being preserved, the view box gets heavily deformed. Now I'm going to reset the view box sort of how it started out and I'm going to set the meat or slice value to meat. And the best thing I can say about meat is that it acts very much like CSS background size contain. And what it does is it always ensures that the entire view box fits inside the viewport. So if I make the viewport very wide, you'll see this is still circular. It is preserving its aspect ratio and we can see it in its entirety. The SVG contains the yellow circle and the gray rectangular background. Now all those cryptic X mid Y min values I was showing you in the docs are called alignment values. And they basically allow you to specify where in a grid we're going to prioritize placing the view box. You can think of X min Y min as the left top corner. X max Y min would be the right top corner. X max Y max would be the right bottom corner. Right now there is only extra space on the horizontal X axis. So I can set it over to X max Y min and that's basically just going to move it all the way over to the right. There's really no room to move up and down because the viewport is filled completely vertically. If I click on X mid Y mid, that's gonna put it in the middle horizontally. Changing the vertical values isn't going to have any effect. If I make this really narrow, now you'll see we're preserving the aspect ratio of the view box, but the viewport is much taller. X mid Y min puts it at the top center, and I can put it in the middle vertically or down at the bottom vertically. And this offers us an incredible amount of control. Switching on over to slice, you can think of slice as similar to the CSS background size cover. And what that will do is uniformly scale the view box so that it fills in the entire viewport. So when we're slicing, you'll see that we are literally slicing off the right and left of the view box. The align settings are gonna work very similarly. With the viewport in this aspect ratio, it's being filled vertically, so we can only really change the alignments horizontally. So let me do the X min, and that's gonna prioritize seeing the left 
of the view box. We already saw what a X mid would look like, and this is an X max showing us the right. If I were to make this view port sort of like this, where it's wide and short, we could do a Y min value up here. Oops, that's a little bit too short. Let's just show you that we will see the top of the smiley face. This X mid Y mid is gonna show us the center. Again, we only have room to align vertically here, and now we can see the max, which will be the bottom. So this is an incredibly powerful demo to play around with because you can change all these values very quickly and see how they impact the rendering of the SVG. So now that we have a better understanding of how these values work conceptually, let's use our own SVG and dive deeper into the code. Here I have this monster that was designed at 300 by 900. I created him using the monster pack assets from Kenny that we've used in a previous scroll trigger lesson. The point here though, is that I'm gonna show you how we can take something that's very tall and skinny and cram it into a container with a different aspect ratio. So let's hop on over to CodePen. So over here I have nothing in my document. I'm gonna to go to the HTML panel and just paste in all the code for this monster and you'll see that he's actually quite big and I have to scroll all this way down to see all the way down to his cute little feet there all right so let's scroll on back up and in the code here we're not going to pay attention to any of the SVG stuff except for way up top I have the view box code okay and as we learned in our previous video about the view box and the viewport if we don't set a width and height the SVG is basically going to make itself as wide as its containing element, which in this case is just the body of the page. Now in my CSS, I have height 100% set on the body so that I can eventually make the height of the SVG 100%. Not terribly important right now. What is important right now though is that I have this border of one pixel solid red on the SVG so that you can see exactly the space that it takes up all the way across the browser window now and all the way down. So without anything special in my SVG tag up here except for the view box attributes, the SVG is going to be as big as it needs to be to fill in the width of the body and it's going to be sized proportionally as far as the height goes so that nothing is out of whack. And I purposefully have these round circles here as eyes because that helps us see that nothing is being distorted. Nothing's being squished or squashed. The aspect ratio is being perfectly preserved. I'm gonna go ahead and take this SVG tag here and I'm gonna add a width equal to 400. And now you'll see clearly that the width is 400 and he's not gonna be as tall, but the aspect ratio is going to be perfectly maintained. As we can see, we still have the circular eyes. Now where things are going to get interesting is that I'm going to set the height equal to 400 as well. And what this is going to do is give us a square viewport, but we have a tall and skinny view box. So this is where preserve aspect ratio is going to come into play. And by default here, what you'll see is that the aspect ratio is being preserved. We have our tall and skinny view box fitting inside of our square view port. And there's no distortion whatsoever, which means our aspect ratio is being preserved. I'm gonna go up here and add another attribute to my SVG tag, which is preserve aspect ratio. And I'm gonna set it equal to none. <gasps> With this setting now, you can clearly see that we're getting some squishing going on here, okay? It's not preserving the normal tall and skinny aspect ratio, and now our circular eyes have become ovals. So clearly what you can see here is that preserve aspect ratio none is not the same as not having preserve aspect ratio set. Now to further illustrate this squishing that happens, I'm gonna set the width to be 100% and the height to be 100%. Ooh, and now we get something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this smaller browser window over which has the same demo running inside of it and show you that as I resize the width and height, you'll see that we are squishing, squashing, stretching the monster. 
It's always filling the browser window completely, but it's always being distorted. Now, where these preserve aspect ratio settings are gonna come in handy is when we have these different aspect ratios like this, but we want to force the SVG to always look a certain way. So let's say that regardless of the aspect ratio and size of the browser window, I always want to see him full height and centered. So what I'm going to do is take this preserved aspect ratio none and change it over to X mid Y min meet. So here you'll see that we are seeing him full height, perfectly centered with no distortion whatsoever. And if I bring in my little preview window here, you'll see that I can make him shorter, taller, and if I go skinnier or wider, that he's always perfectly centered with that aspect ratio preserved. So again, if this is the behavior you want, what you can do is either not have preserved aspect ratio set or use these settings. And I wanna point out that since we are filling the viewport vertically, the Y min setting we have here could be Y mid or Y max. It's not going to change anything because there's nowhere for him to move vertically. It's really just the X position that we're setting here. Now I mentioned earlier that meet is like the CSS background size contain, which again means the full view box will be contained inside the viewport here. Now we can mess with these values a little bit here. Instead of having the X be in the middle, I'm gonna set this to X min, and now you'll see that moves the monster over to the left. If I went with an X max value, it would move him over to the right. And in a situation where I'm going to possibly be resizing the window, you'll see here that if I resize the window, he always stays stuck to the right. So I don't know, maybe there's a case where you need that sort of control. Just remember that Meet will preserve uniform scaling and fit the entire view box into the viewport. Perhaps try to remember that the edges of the view box will meet the edges of the viewport. Next, let's talk about Slice. To illustrate Slice, I'm just gonna change this Meet over to Slice, and whoa, we get something totally different now. Here you'll see that Slice will uniformly scale the view box to fill as much of the viewport as possible. So you'll see the top of his head is really big filling up the viewport. And portions of the view box that bleed outside the viewport will be sliced off. So everything below his eyes, we're not seeing. Right now for our alignment settings, we have X max, which is left to right, isn't going to do much here because horizontally we're filling the viewport as much as possible. It's along the Y axis that we don't fit. So what we're doing here is we're prioritizing the Y min value, which aligns the top of the view box with the top of the viewport. If I set this Y min over to Y max, Check it out, we get his feet, okay? That's actually kind of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and bring over my smaller browser window, and now you'll see that as the viewport changes size, we are prioritizing seeing the Y max portion of the viewport being sort of attached to the bottom of the viewport. And right now he's so wide that I can't even pull it down far enough to see his head. Let me just get this out of here real quick. And I'm just gonna take this width value over here and change it to 200, make it a bit more narrow. All right, so you'll see now that we're seeing a lot more of his body squished into this viewport, but we're still prioritizing seeing the feet down below and his head is getting sliced off. Let me go bring back my smaller browser window and now watch as I extend it down, all right? There we go. You'll see as the page loads, his head is sliced off, but as the viewport gets taller, we can see more of the view box up top. Let's get rid of this and consider another change. Let's take the width here and let's go really extreme and make it only 50 pixels wide. 
Now you'll see again that we have as much of the view box as possible filling the view port, but he cannot fit into this super skinny rectangle. So what we're doing is we are prioritizing the X max value, which is the right side, and his left side is getting sliced off. Looking at it this way, I'm just gonna set this over to X mid, and now you'll see he gets centered inside of the viewport. Hopefully watching me make these little changes in real time is helping you have the concept sink in. As a final refresher, Slice will uniformly scale the view box to fill as much of the viewport as possible. Portions of the view box that bleed outside the viewport will be sliced off. So I know we've covered a lot of ground today and your head is probably spinning. So I'm just gonna leave you with a little challenge and then in the next video, we're going to explore just a few more things about the viewport, view box, and preserve aspect ratio together. So what I want to leave you with is my three monsters demo, okay? I want you to see if you can make it so that we get this behavior. When the browser window gets shorter, we see his head, his feet, and he gets squashed. When it gets longer, we're going to go to see all of them. And when we squish it horizontally, this is the effect that we will get, okay? We won't preserve aspect ratio here, but here we'll see the left side, and here we'll see the right side, okay? So this is a great exercise for you to experiment with the code and see what happens when you type in these different preserve aspect ratio values. I'm gonna leave you with this code pen here where all three monsters have preserve aspect ratio none. So they're all gonna get squashed. So you're gonna to have to update the preserve aspect ratio value to get the results I had just shown you. And since there's so much SVG code in here, I just wanna show you that in CodePen, you can do a command F and maybe just search for an opening SVG tag. That'll take you down to the next one. So this will be the middle one. And then if you do a command G, it'll take you down to the third one. Hopefully these shortcuts help. I'll leave you some links to the MDN docs and Giovanni's awesome demo to help you out with the syntax. Give it a shot, and I'll see you in the next video for some more cool tips and tricks. If you want to master Greensock animation, visit creativecodingclub.com. Access over 200 lessons with 40 hours of HT video, tons of demos, and get new lessons weekly for only $2.95 a month. Visit creativecodingclub.com for more.